The Ketteliers returned to Lowell Park today looking for their fourth win in a row, which would mark the first time this season that they would win four straight. Chris Farrell got the start and got Kotuit into a precarious situation in the first, loading the bases with no outs. After out number one, he would walk Eddie McCabe to move the runners over and bring in Orleans' first run of the day. However, with the infield in, Farrell was able to get Josh Zamora to ground a ball to Adam Oviedo on the next at bat, and Oviedo would go home for one, and Kessler would go to first for two to get Kotuit out of the jam. Although Kotuit has usually been the first to make a run scoring statement in their last few games, they showed that they could still respond when they were down. As in the bottom of the first, Mason McWhorter doubled to deep right to bring Nick Gonzalez around to score, nodding the game at 1-1. Kotuit would get out of another jam in the second and would keep Orleans quiet for a few innings, until the Ketelier bats started to take control at the plate in the fourth. Matt Mervis roped a double down the right field line that plunked the base of the foul pole and allowed Mason McWhorter to score all the way from first to put Kotuit up 2-1. Later in the inning, Christian Robinson grounded a single up the middle that sent Matt Mervis sliding home for Kotuit's third run. The Ketteliers proceeded to get the bases loaded for Adam Oviedo, who chopped an easy looking ball back to the Orleans pitcher who decided to go back home, but he surprisingly threw wide of his catcher's glove, allowing Casey Schmidt and Christian Robinson to cross the plate and make it 5-1 Kotuit. Up next was Nick Gonzalez, and he made his return today from a leg injury, and he showed no signs of rust whatsoever as he lined a ball over the second baseman's head for a single that would bring Colton Kessler around for Kotuit's sixth run and Gonzalez's 21st RBI of the season. Kotuit had accumulated a concrete lead, but in the sixth inning they found themselves in a jam akin to those of the early innings. With two outs, the inning could have ended on a 3-1 putout. At first baseman, Mason McWhorter hadn't been a bit off on his toss to reliever Bo Hofstra off a ground ball, but the botched play left runners at the corners for Orleans, and their next batter would single to drive in one. Zach Britton would follow with another single to drive in a run and reduce Kotuit's lead to three. At this point, Coach Roberts took out Hofstra for the heat slinging Kyle Nicholas to get out of the jam. But Nicholas would throw a wild pitch to his first batter, which led a fourth Orleans run across the plate. And it would all come undone on the very next at bat, as Tanner Murray laid down the fourth hit of the inning, a two RBI single that would signify the completion of Orleans' comeback and bring them even with Kotuit at 6-6. Six six. All in all, these offensive flurries used up a lot of daylight. So by the end of the seventh inning, where Kotuit couldn't generate any more offense, it was too dark to continue on, so the game was called, the final score being 6-6. Six to six. This time means Kotuit still hasn't beaten Orleans this year, and it's the second time Orleans has come back to tie a game at Lowell Park. Today's pitching was quite the opposite of the shutdown outings we've seen in the last three games, and although Kotuit's offense continued to generate today, We've learned that their pitching and their bats need to work in tandem to really play great this season. Following this disappointing tie, Kotuit will return to Bourne tomorrow in search of another W. We spoke with Coach Roberts after today's game, and sending you now to our interview with him, and signing off for the Kotuit Ketteliers, I'm Jacob Cohen. All right, Coach, it was kind of a, a tough one where you have a 6-1 lead, and obviously they have the big sixth inning. Uh, what do you tell to the guys after a game like this? I thought we did some really good things early in the game because they could have blown us out in the first and second inning. Yeah. And then uh, we held them at bay for one run, and then we end up coming back and scoring quite a few runs. So it's one of those games that wasn't pretty, I think, either way. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I'm the guys have – played so well and worked so hard that, um, you know, I think we were fortunate to have a 6-6 tie. I'm not sure how many walks we had today, but it was probably 9 or 10. And when you have 9 or 10 walks, you're lucky to walk away with a win or a tie. What did you see out of Cole Ramage today? He came in probably earlier than he was expecting to and pitched pretty well. Yeah, he pitched really well. He, he did a, uh, by far his best outing since he got here. He kept the ball down. <laughs> Excuse me, his fastball and breaking ball were pretty good. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think Cole uh, held us, held it at bay until we scored. Uh, then we kind of let it get away from us. But again, uh, each player at different times during the season picks you up, and uh, and Cole did a great job of picking us up today. 
Speaking of players that tend to pick you up, Nick Gonzalez is back in the lineup today, and right away, a, a double right to center field. Just how impressed are you? Like, obviously, we all know he's a great talent, but how impressed are you when he comes back and just has a game like this? Well, I mean, again, Nick is, is very consistent, and when you look at his swing, you know, he's, it's compact, it's consistent, and, you know, nothing surprises me. Uh, you know, sometimes he hits the ball extremely hard like he did at the second baseman. He doesn't get anything, but he puts the head of the bat on the ball really well. And so uh, does it surprise me he let off the game with a double? Uh, not at all. <laughs> Just one last question. Uh, Mason McCorder obviously had a kind of tough play at first base in the sixth inning. Was there anything individually you tell to him? You, obviously, you just said guys will pick you up some game. Is that is that just kind of the message you send to him? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the fundamental part, you know, you always toss the ball in front of the pitcher. And with a guy can run like they had going down the line, number nine hitter, he can really run. You know, he tossed the ball a little bit behind him, and it, and it kind of changed the inning. But Mason's played really well. I like him as a first baseman. He didn't play first base that much at Georgia Southern, so he's having to get reacclimated to it. And I think he's done a great job, so I'm really pleased with him there.